Hello everybody, I hope you're all well, I hope you're keeping safe. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, my name is Tracy Evans, just in case some of you have never met me or heard of me or heard my dulcet tones on YouTube. So today I'm popping by with a nice simple card. So I've asked, been asked for some simple ideas, so I've got an, a nice simple card here. Uh, and I've opted for blues, so sort of a monochromatic feel, uh, nice and simple, uh, and I'm really pleased with the way it's turned out. So, first of all, I just need to talk about card and paper. So, when you're doing certain techniques, card and paper is vitally important, especially if you're using pens that need to blend. So, in this workshop I'm using my Ecoline pens. I'm using them mainly because I've got a new pack and I haven't used them yet and I always say that don't let things gather dust, use them. So that was my plan today. Now if you don't have anything that I'm using don't worry you can just improvise. So if you don't have the Ecoline brush pens you can use your Distress Oxide inks and colour with that or you can use your Inktense pencils or anything that's reactive with water to colour with. Now, because I'm using those Ecoline pens, I'm using a good quality card, paper, surface, whatever, substrate, whatever you want to call it. And I'm using Strathmore Bristol Smooth Surface. Now, you can use any watercolour card, a nice smooth watercolour card that allows you to blend your colours. So you just need something that's smooth. So if you're going to use a standard watercolour, just make sure it's smooth rather than a bumpy surface. Because if you stamp onto that bumpy surface, then your imagery isn't perfect all the time. So let's start. So what we're going to start with is a piece of that Strathmore, that Bristol Smooth, or you could use Bockingford Smooth card. So it's beautifully smooth. And my card measures five inches by seven inches. So that's what we're beginning with. And what I'm going to start with is I'm going to use my stamp set hibiscus. So, and I'm going to use this piece here from my hibiscus stamp set. So just looking for an acrylic block. I'm always ending up looking for an acrylic block. So just plunk that there and just take that stamp. I love this stamp set. It's got a lovely detail on there and when you use the acetate you can judge exactly where you want to put that imagery. So I just love the detail on it. So I just think it looks beautiful the detail on that stamp. So I'm just going to put that on my acrylic block and for this stamp set, I'm going to use the whole stamp set on this occasion, so the whole image. And I'm using VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink. Now, the VersaFine Claire has got a good open time, which means it stays wetter longer. Now, I know a few people have said that theirs are drying out quite quickly. What I do when I'm creating, whilst I'm creating, I just leave the ink pad facing upwards like that, so that it's face down so that you can see the reverse of the stamp set. Just while I'm working, it's just a habit I get into, but I've never had any problems with the ink pads. And to be honest, they work so beautifully with the detailed stamps that I'm using that I just adore the VersaFine Claire. So what I'm going to do now is just decide where I want to stamp this image. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for, a, it, it might not be exactly the same, as the first stamped card because as you know when you create a card if you're trying to recreate the exact same card something always changes slightly it does with me anyway so i'm just allowing that ink to settle on the card i'm just allowing it to soak in i'm not lifting straight away sometimes if you lift straight away you don't give the ink enough time to absorb into that card or your substrate. So I'm just going to lift that because I'm using the acrylic blocks from All and Create, which allow me to lift the acrylic block so that I get this central area here. 
and I'm already, as I've started to stamp this, I'm already thinking of something else I can use. It's funny, isn't it? I'm just already thinking I might incorporate something else. I'm just reaching for that. So just going to lift that up so you can see the beauty of that image. I just think it's stunning. I know I'm biased because it's my stamp set, but I do think it's stunning. Right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get my heart grunge stamp and the idea of this little mini workshop is that you use your stamps little pieces from your stamp sets and mix and match so I'm going to use my heart grunge stamp set and I'm going to use this element here there's nowhere to put all my products because they're just all lying all over the place so just reaching for that stamp set let's reach there we go so i've got this stamp set here so when you're using parts of an image you just need to be aware you need to make sure that your stamp is completely dry you need to make sure there's no other areas that uh, have got any ink on there that can be transferred so just make sure that it's all dry i've already got ink on my acrylic block already it lasted five minutes so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this part of the image here. You don't always have to use every part of your stamp set. You can use little parts of your stamp and create your own collage. So I'm just inking up that little alphabet at the bottom. This is just to show how useful your stamp sets can be when you mix and match. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend this a little bit. Just extend this collage a little bit more. Like so. So I'm just stamping that there. And I'm a great believer that, you know, when you've got these stamp sets, you need to make sure you use them, but also you need to make sure you enjoy them. So what I've done here is I've extended the detail across so I'm really pleased with that and what I want to do is I just want to add a little bit more detail here so what I'm going to do is just make sure that I remove the ink where I've just stamped because you don't want to end up where you transfer that ink that you've just inked up onto an area that you don't really want so just take a few moments just to dry off that ink just to make sure that it's not going to transfer anywhere and what I want to do this time is I want to use this heart here because I love the fact it's got that number on so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to ink the heart so I'm sort of using the edge of my ink pad and just going around the heart and sometimes just to see where you've got the moisture on your stamp, it's it's a good idea just to lift your stamp and then you can see where you've got that moisture. Sometimes unless you lift it, you can't actually see where you've got the ink. So I can see that I've just got a little bit here. So I'm just going to wipe that off. Where else? If I get some numbers, that's absolutely fine. But just give it a wipe anyway. And what I'm going to do now is I often stand over my imagery just to see where I'm stamping. So I'm just going to add this heart. And again, just even pressure just on that area. And you don't need to press too hard. You don't need to make your wrists ache. Just give it good, even pressure. And again, I'm using the All and Create acrylic blocks so I can lift the acrylic block just to get a good image. And what I've done now is I've extended the image a little bit further and I'm creating my own collage, which is what I just love. I love creating my own collage. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just grabbing another stamp set 
and this is through the meadows i wanted to use this stamp set because it's just been released but i wanted to show you that you don't have to use all the bits of the stamp set so i want to use some of these circles here so you can use little bits and pieces of your stamp set so don't think that because you've got one stamp set you've got to use the whole image you haven't obviously that would be beautiful stamped on there but it's nice to change things up a little bit i think it is so what i'm going to do is i'm going to ink these circles just at the bottom here just giving them a little ink with that visa fine claire nocturne and what i can do is i can place exactly where i want and you can see how this st is finished so what i can do is i can place my circle over the st like so and then i can add those extra circles as if i'm extending the design so i'm extending the design using a different stamp set and you're creating your own collage and you're mixing and matching those stamps so look at your stamps in different ways just see how you could make them look a little bit different so can you see i've now extended that i've extended the image to make it look a little bit different and what i want to do is extend it a little bit further so i'm going to ink those same circles i'm circles mad i have to say i can never have enough circles it's just so easy to use so i'm inking those again and i'm going to extend the design a little bit further and what i'm going to do is just interconnect the circles again i'm always trying to think of ideas just to to give you different concepts different ways of using your stamp sets think it's important that we try and use them in as many different ways as possible but sometimes if you haven't got a new idea you can do this and it makes everything look completely different and that's what I enjoy so what I'm going to do now is just take a look at that project and see where else I can just change it a little bit so what I'm going to do is I've got this little stamp set on my heart grunge and I use this one a lot. It's one of them great filler stamps that I just adore. It's a lovely little stamp and I'm going to ink that with the Versafine Claire Nocturne once again. Just pick and I'm going to use it with my finger. And what I'm going to do is just extend this a little bit further. And I just love this little stamp. I just think it's a good little filly. Just lovely. Let's just wipe that so that... There we go. And I'm just going to add a little bit of detail down the bottom. It's great because I love creating little collages and making things look a little bit different. And I will lift this up just so that you can see that. And I will just wipe my hands just because that card is white and we don't want to really transfer anything. So let me just lift that up so that you can see you've extended this design here and you've extended this design here as well and here just to give it a little bit of extra detail. And what we're going to do then is we're going to bring in a scrap piece of card. And this time what we're going to do is we're going to stamp the butterfly. So we'll take that butterfly, again with the Versafine Claire Nocturne. Just give it a really good ink. And 
then what we're going to do is just stamp that onto another piece of that Bristol Smooth or Bockingford Smooth or Smooth Watercolour. And I'm using the All and Create acrylic blocks just so I can lift that image. Just lift my sleeves up because it's getting rather warm in here. So just, just allow that ink to sit. Don't be in too much of a rush. And there we've got a beautiful butterfly. I mean, the detail in that is just, I just think it's gorgeous. So we've got our stamped pieces at the moment. So just one more other stamped piece that I need. I need a sentiment. So let's stamp that while we're here. So just remove this. So this love sentiment is from the Heart Grunge. So the Heart Grunge stamp set that we've been using. So we're going to use that again. So what we've got here is we've got the love word, which is from the Heart Grunge stamp set 453. We're just going to stamp that as well. It just means that if we stamp these now, they can be drying just while we do everything else. Just means it's it's done and it can be on one side just drying away. Love sentiment. I love the font on that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to think about colouring. But before, do, we, do I want to colour first? Yes, we're going to colour first. Can you tell I couldn't make my mind up there? So what I've got is I've got Ecoline. Is that, does them numbers make, are they? Yes, Ecoline 522 and Ecoline 508. Does it say colour on or do I need something like a magnifying glass? Turquoise blue and Prussian blue. So there you go. So any blues, if you haven't got the Ecoline pens, then use anything that you've got to hand. I've got a water brush, so I'll be using that as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to colour the areas that need colouring. And what I love about the Ecoline pens is the vibrancy. That even when I use a blue, the vibrancy is gorgeous. So I'm just laying down my first colour. And they've got like a, a felt tip, like a brush tip, but like a felt tip. So really easy to use. So I'm just going to add the darker colour around the edges. Just to give it some depth. And I'm not, you know, it's not perfection. And then what I'm going to do, don't put your lid on yet, Tracy, because you're going to do some more colouring, is I'm going to blend those colours out. Now, because I'm using that Bristol Smooth or using your Bockingford, it really does blend the colours out beautifully. And it gives me the vibrancy. So I just want a piece of kitchen roll just at the side just to wipe off the dark colour. Then what I'm going to do is choose your areas you want to colour. So as I say, if you haven't got the Ecoline pens, use your Distress Oxide inks and colour with those. Just paint with the Distress Oxides by putting the Distress Oxides onto a non-stick craft sheet, spritz with water, and then colour with them that way. I'm very lucky, you know, I often treat myself to craft items, but I'm aware that not everybody can do that. So just use what you have. So just wipe that off. Let me just lift so you can see the vibrancy of that colour. It really is beautiful. And you can go back and even blend more. It's just, they're just so easy to use. But I must stipulate, if you're not getting the results that you want, that will be down to the card. It will be down to the card that you're using because it won't blend. Some card just doesn't react enough 
to water so you don't get the blend that you want so i'm starting with the light color and then i'm going to go with a bit of the dark color just around the edges and then you can blend them out and it does really blend beautifully and it just I'm in a little world of my own when have you noticed that when you color you go quiet and it's very difficult when you're demoing when you color to try and not go quiet because you as the viewer will like to hear what we're doing but it's so difficult not to not to go quiet as you as you're blending so i'm just layering that first color and then going with the dark color if you want you can blend the first color first and then go with the second color whichever is your preferred method I just like blending the two colours together and you can actually go back and add some more of the dark colour as well. So you can go back into it and add even more dark. So if you think it needs a little bit more dark, I just tap a little bit more dark around the edges. It's just, I love them, especially using them on this smooth... Um, card i mean i must admit i've done things like use what card i've got and then i've wondered why i haven't got the results that i've really wanted and then i realized that when i get the right card it works beautifully the pens or whatever do exactly what they say so just blending that out and obviously in real life i can see blending beautifully you might not be able to see that on camera, but I can see that. And the vibrancy is fantastic. But what you can do is you can go back and add a little bit more darkness to the edges of your circles. Just dab a little bit of darkness if you want to do that. So then I'm just going to colour one more. The problem is it's knowing when to stop because you just get engrossed. And if you notice, I'm leaving some circles in white. I'm doing that because I want things to pop. I don't want them to all be blue. So I, I'm making sure that I leave some of the areas in white. And you can easily look at your project and then go back afterwards to see if you want to add any more blue. So this is what we've got so far. And what I'm going to do is just do a little bit more on this one here. And I have to say, I mean, I'm not, I'm not a professional colorist by any stretch, but I have to say it's very therapeutic. And it's lovely when you can use a simple product and get a beautiful blend, especially if you're not really good at blending. When something blends all on its own, it does the job for you. So I love that fact. So let's just move that out the way and let's bring in the butterfly. So what I'm going to do with the butterfly is I'm just going to add some colour. So I'm starting with the lightest colour on the butterfly it doesn't matter if you go outside the edges because you're going to cut that out anyway so it doesn't really matter then i'm going to add some of the dark and you might not be able to see that in camera but there is some dark and as you paint it blends beautifully. You can get rid of the lines. You'll have to excuse me picking it up because I'm picking it up in the hope that you can see things a little bit better and you can see 
of the blending. Let's just get a little bit more water flowing. Just so that you can see how beautifully on that smooth card that that blends. It all blends out beautifully so you don't get no lines. So if like me, you're a simple colorist and you don't like complicated, these are wonderful. And then you can add a little bit more darkness. And if you want to add a little bit more vibrancy, you can actually go over when it's dry with your pencil crayons, but it just blends out that line just so that you've got a beautiful blend. And you can keep going back and adding as much color as you want. So if you want to add more darkness, like there's a little bit more darkness on that wing than there is on the other wing. So just bring a little bit more out. That's better. I'm now talking to a butterfly. Oh, I'm so strange. So I've got a nice blend there. So we can put our lids on, preferably the right lid on the right pen. And what you do is you get it all over your finger, if you're like me. And then what we're going to do is just cut out that butterfly image. Now this is not a complicated card to create. You know, it, we're sometimes hooked up on things that everything has to be super complicated to look wonderful. No, it doesn't. It doesn't have to be super complicated to look lovely. I've seen some beautiful clean and simple cards and the composition's been stunning. So you just go with what makes you happy. You don't have to do exactly what everybody else does by any stretch of the imagination. So I'm just going to cut out my butterfly and I don't need to cut out the antennae because I'm going to add something else. So that doesn't really matter on this occasion. Just cut out. Trying to stay in, in camera, which is usually a good idea if you can stay in camera. So we want that butterfly and we want this love sentiment. I like my little scissors for cutting out fine detail and I like some of my big scissors to cut out sentiments. That's the excuse I tell my husband for having so many things. But there you go, all part of it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to think about what I want. So first of all, you know, I don't want to over clutter the card. I'm, I, I quite like this, but I do want to add a little bit of texture just to add to the design element. So we're going to unravel some cotton, just black cotton thread, so all thread. Don't get the polyester one like I did and then nearly break your hands when you try to rip it. That was entertaining. I thought I was losing my strength. I had no idea. So what I'm going to do now is what I'm thinking is, I'm going to add, so I'm going to add my cotton threads so what you need to do, I don't want to add my cotton threads first or second. No, second. This is what I'm like when I'm doing projects. So I just want to see. I do mess around with the composition a little bit. So if I put that, yes. You see, I know whether I like something straight away. So I'm going to add this optical lens, which is a Tim Holtz optical lens. But I've just remembered I'm adding the glue and I want to add another detail to my card. Just racing ahead before I've realised. What I want to do is I want to add a little bit more detail to my card. So what I want to do is move all these out of the way and I want to get the Neuron Stencil. So I've got my Neuron Stencil and Mermaid Lagoon Distress Oxide ink, And I'm just going to add a little bit of that blue to my stencil. I was getting so excited about the card then I was racing ahead. 
off camera I'm just spritzing that stencil with water just off camera so it's spritzed with water my stencil is and then I'm just going to place that stencil just down onto my card and then let's get a clean piece of kitchen roll because there's nothing worse if you get a dirty piece of kitchen roll and then transfer something onto your card so just allow that to sit on the card just give it time to soak in and it just absorbs that ink which is reactive to water into the card and then you can lift you can hold your stencil in place and lift make sure you've got what you want now you've still got some ink on there so if you've got another piece of card which i have i've got another piece of card let me just add some for the inside of the card so we'll just add a little bit of stenciling just to the inside because this can be your inner so just add a little bit of that to the inside of your card there you go that's all you need so we'll move that to one side and then we'll bring this in and what you can do is you can let that dry naturally so as you can see it just gives me a little bit more detail to the card still leaving open white space without being too overpowering so it's not cluttering the card then I've got my optical lens that I want around about here like so so I want my optical lens there and then I'm thinking I want some cotton texture that's now going to stick to my fingers of course it is and then I'm going to add this butterfly like so uh, and then you put your adhesive down and you've got no idea where you've put it so I'm just going to add the adhesive a good dollop of PVA just to add to that optical lens and the good thing about when you're doing the cards is you can let everything dry when you're doing a demo you haven't got the time to let everything to set solid you just have to go with it and sort of work with it even though everything's moving around and swimming around because it hasn't it hasn't stuck down yet so what i'm going to do now is add a pen nib to the butterfly so i've got these vintage pen nibs tim holtz does some nibs as well if you want those nibs and i'm just going to add that to the top of my butterfly and don't worry about a little bit of the glue showing because that will dry clear so don't worry about that you want to leave a little bit floating out to the side so that you get good adhesion especially with using a pen nib and i love the blend of color just love that so what i'm going to do now is i've got my love sentiment and i'm going to add the love think about you don't want it up here because you want it in this cluster here so i'm going to add it here like so and what we're going to do is when you've got it like this and you've got it to the stage you can see exactly where your design is going what i'm going to do is just add a little bit of stamping here so i've got this little stamp again from the heart grunge or do, do you know i'm not i'm going to use the heart grunge stamp set it's just i'm just thinking you see this detail here i might use that this is what i'm like all the time so I'm taking my heart grunge stamp set I'm removing it from the acrylic block because I want a little bit of this alphabet again just maybe to add a little bit here nothing much just to add a little bit just a few of those letters and I'm using it off the acrylic block just so I can press exactly where I want just to add those letters that's it 
and then I'm just going to add a few of the numbers just a few of the numbers randomly just to extend it a little bit further and creating my own collage there we go so I've just extended that a little bit further lovely so let's add some finishing touches so I'll just get another water brush because I'm going to use grey now so I'm going to use something on my grey ink tense pencil I think there's some fibre or something on the end of my ink tense pencil let's just drop it so what I'm going to do is just add the ink tense pencil just around the edge and again you will wait for everything to dry because there's nothing more frustrating than if you're going round the edge of the sentiment and then everything's moving you don't want that and all of mine is moving I can feel it's beginning to set but it's not quite set yet so now I'm going to use my other blending brush, my water brush, just because that's got the grey on anyway. So I didn't want to add any blue around the outside edges. Just to make this sentiment pop a little bit more, like so. See, I'm loving this. Now what I'm going to do is add some of my Posca pen. Now if you're not a fan of Posca pens, use a little bit of acrylic paint, put the acrylic paint on the side, spritz it with water and then just tap on the end of your scissors like this and you'll get the white splatters just in the same way. I love my Posca pen, that's just what I'm used to and I love using it obviously you use it for other things as well so it has to have more than one use and then what I'm going to do is I've got these um, brush pens from Ecoline and it dawned on me that they're quite moist so I should be able to add yeah some splatters from the Ecoline pen just so that everything coordinates that's plenty and if I just hold that up, just so that you can see that we've, we've got this optical lens and this cluster here, but it's sort of still got some nice white open space. Just love that. And then what we're going to do is we add that to a black mat, like so. Just add that to your black mat. And then you add that to a white card blank. So let's just get them all in place. I'm not adhering them at the moment because obviously, because you've got that heavy embellishment on there, you need to wait until everything is set solid. You don't want to try and lift it up, tip it over to add your adhesive and then it all fall off. But what I want to show you is just the wonderful blend of colour with those Ecoline pens. Right, what we've got now is, do you remember this? Let's just move this, there's nowhere to move anything, this is the problem on my desk. So remember this, that was for the inside of the card. So what you need to do then is take your butterfly stamp, or whichever stamp you're using at the time, and I'm just going to ink up the butterfly. Just giving it a really good ink. And I never rush when I'm inking something up. I just take my time and allow a good layer of ink so I'm just removing some of the ink that I don't want because I just want part of the image inside the inside of the card 
So I'm going to add this here, like so. And again, I can lift this acrylic block, but sometimes it's nice to think about the inside of the card just as much as the outside of the card. And I'm still using that Bristol Smooth, which is beautiful to stamp on and it's beautiful to colour on as well. So as you can see, you've got that lovely butterfly on the inside and it seems a shame not to add a little bit of colour because we can. So just add a little bit of colour with the Ecoline pens because now I've got them, I should use them practice what I preach, then use the darker colour and then we'll blend that out. Just make sure that your brush is clean and just blend that out. And obviously because I'm going direct to paper, just make sure you take a little bit of time and a little bit more care just to blend you know just be mindful that you're actually working direct on the card you're not cutting it out this time so you do need to take a little bit more care because the previous butterfly we actually cut out And if I just hold that up, you can see that's the inside of the card. Let's bring in the original, the original, the front of the card. Let me just hold those up just so you can see the beautiful detail. I just think, and you know what we're missing, don't you? We're missing just some. splatters because you want the inside to coordinate with the outside that's better looks like we've thought about the whole process so just bring this in move everything out the way so you can actually see and there's the inside of your card and the card front so I hope you enjoyed that little video. I hope you feel inspired just to give it a go. And I hope you all have a lovely weekend and a week ahead. Uh, stay safe and I'll see you all soon. Love to all. Bye for now.